quite clearly the world is becoming a more fragmented, more difficult place. To say what it means for the future of travel, I think, is, 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 is a hard call because what we've seen is travel increasing, people, you know, particularly post-pandemic, wanting to travel more. And I think the trends on that are probably positive. I think one of the things we're going to see is that regional travel and integration will grow. I'm particularly thinking of Africa, Latin America. I think where travel is likely to be impacted is that big long haul travel and particularly between bits of the world that are in competition with each other. So it's, a, it's always a bit of a mixed outlook, isn't it? I think it's really clear that it's making it less of a priority for governments, not so much geographical instability that's driving that, but uh, economic concerns, inflation um, and economic challenges mean governments are focusing more on that. And there is a cost to decarbonisation. And I think governments are talking about, you know, still talking about the wish to decarbonise. But I think when they're looking at the cost, um, there's a reckoning there. And I think there is going to be um, a big challenge for, for governments to convince electorates that it's a price worth paying in the short term. Airlines need to um, use scenarios to understand what are the possible futures. Scenarios are not, are not predictive, they're possible futures. And airlines need to think, how can we manage the risk? But also, you know, and the big flip side of risk is opportunity. As an airline, in certain futures, how can we be successful? And I think, for me, that's probably the most powerful tool in a very uncertain world um, that airlines can use.